Cyberpunk 2077. It was the most highly anticipated game of, well, ever. And now that it's upon us, theme PCs and mods were bound to be created. And we've got one here. But this time, it's got a little bit of a twist. Let's do this. NZXT's N7Z490 motherboard comes with all the latest features including Wi-Fi 6, support for the latest Intel processors and more than enough fan and RGB headers to light up your life. Did I forget to mention that it comes covered in armour? Armour? Am I doing it right? To find out more click the link in the description below. Now when you think of a themed PC what do you think of? Uh, bit of paint here, little bit of paint there, or maybe as simple as setting RGB to specific colours. Well, this PC, it takes the word theme and completely blows it out of the water. So the Cyberpunk 2077, spelt 2, T-W-O, you'll see exactly why, was created by pro modder Richie Bowser. Now, Richie's not exactly new to the modding scene and has been around for well, quite some time actually. Basically, I'm implying he's old school or just, well, old. And yeah, he's over there and he's, he's looking at me. You know how, yeah. <laughs> over the years, he's created some pretty incredible builds. One of which is the dual system desk build, which we featured on this very channel. You can check that out somewhere above my head. Either way, it was a sight to behold. So back to the game. We all know that Cyberpunk 2077 is a very demanding title, taking the crown from the likes of Red Dead Redemption 2 and even Crisis before that. It's literally being labelled the new crisis. Can it run Cyberpunk? Can it run Cyberpunk 2077? I mean, what you basically need is a system that can handle it, and it will actually bring most systems to their knees. Now, the game hasn't necessarily gone without, say, teething issues. With bugs and glitches and, well, straight crashes to desktop, it has had some updates which have kind of fixed the problems here and there. And there is potentially an update coming this month update 1.07 which hopefully i say hopefully fixes a lot more issues now console users on the other hand well they're kind of seeing it a little bit worse and the likes of sony have even gone as far as issuing refunds for it i mean damn now the build that we have here wouldn't exactly struggle running it anyway i mean the specs are pretty well insane on top of that it's been built to not only play the game once but as i hinted at the beginning of this video but to play it twice via the use of virtual machines. Now to run the game twice, you do need some serious power. And that's one thing that this system definitely has. At the heart of the system is a monster 28 core, 56 thread Xeon W3275 processor. We're talking serious server territory here. And it's being used to, <laughs> to play cyberpunk. <laughs> I, to keep that beast cool, however, you are gonna need some serious cooling. And that's where the very sexy Bits Power CPU block comes in. Being an LGA 3647 socket, it just looks frankly well, ridiculous. But ridiculous in a kind of good way. I mean, power! Now, with a powerful processor, you're going to need a powerful motherboard. So when it comes to the motherboard, you're going to need something in, I don't know, a little extreme. And it doesn't get more extreme than the Gigabyte C621 Aorus Extreme. I mean, it says extreme in the name, so it must be, well, you know, extreme. The board comes with a whopping 32 phase VRM, making sure that the CPU gets the juice it needs to power those 56 threads. It also supports six channel DDR4 across 12 DIMMs, meaning you can use up to a stonking one terabyte of RAM. If you're wanting to run multiple GPUs, this board has you covered there with no less than <clears throat> seven PCI Express X16 slots. Two run at X16 speeds, four at X8, and the last one at X4 speeds. Hopefully that's enough to play Cyberpunk. To add some performance and, well, frankly, a little bit of bling, Richie went with G-Skills Trident Z 3200 megahertz royal memory. I know, I know, it's not for everyone, but you have to admit it makes the whole system stand out and just looks, I don't know, unique. Sadly, Richie did have some issues with the board and, well, a bad BIOS update. It ended up limiting the available slots to one side. But that side is still B-E-A beautiful. And I'm sure you agree that 46 gig of DDR4 is probably enough to run Cyberpunk. Now Cyberpunk doesn't take up huge amounts of storage. It's not made by Activision after all, but having large amounts of storage is never a bad thing. And this system has tons of it. Storage is taken care of by two 
Kioxia Xeria Plus 2TB NVMe drives in U.2 RAID, another feature the Gigabyte board has. Also included is an Xeria 960GB SATA SSD, again from Kioxia. Now, while this all may seem a little bit overkill, the video clips for the screen inside the case take up quite a lot of storage space. GPUs are no less than two Gigabyte RTX 2080 Ti gaming OCs with some rather nice bits power blocks. That's one 2080 Ti for each machine, meaning it's definitely capable of playing every title out there, including what it's made for, Cyberpunk. Now in a build like this, you need a lot of reliable power, and that's taken care of by not one, but again, two Seasonic Prime 1000 watt platinum power supplies. The 24 pin, of which there are two, are the Lian Li Strymer Plus RGB cables, which I stand by is probably one of the worst product names out there. It's just, uh, I don't know, it doesn't sound right. The other cables inside are all custom extensions made by To The Wire Mods, and I've used them myself personally, definitely recommend them. Now that we know what's inside and powering the build, let's check out what mods have actually been done to it. So the case started life as a Lian Li 011 XL, which is typically a fairly large case. It was sanded to key it, then primed, after which six coats of yellow mixed with a bit of lime were added to it. I don't know much about modding, but well, that seems a little bit excessive, doesn't it? Richie then airbrushed the logos and artwork on top with a mix of green, blue, and white pearl, which makes a kind of dark green that changes to blue when it's under certain lighting. He then took sandpaper and basically scuffed around the edges, indented some places, and gently added wear to the logos and the art to give that whole kind of worn look to it. Four coats of 2K lacquer and some polishing and Bob's your uncle. On the back panel, he laid down the Samurai logo in pearl silver, then covered in pearl white and then pearl red. He then wore this down so some of the colors kind of showed through others and rubbed around the Samurai logo again to add some extra wear to it. And frankly, it looks amazing. Now, modifications on the inside come down to the motherboard heat shields. They were rubbed down, primed and sprayed in flat black, and then a sewing needle was then used to scratch the words no future on the IO cover, pretty much the same way that it is in the game. Then on the other side, he scratched in the words, where is Johnny? Just like the graffiti that we see in the game as well. The edges were then rubbed down to raw aluminium, cleaned up and given two coats of 2K lacquer to protect it. Moving down to the GPU backplate, this was designed in Photoshop and was then sent off to a specialist with a UV printer. And when you see the backlighting actually coming through it and it's all turned on, it simply looks amazing and ties in with the rest of the theme. You also see just down a little bit lower, the screen across the PSU shroud changed kind of direction over the course of the build. It was originally meant for hardware monitoring, but wanted to be I don't know, a little bit different from the norm, what most people do. So a 1280 by 390 mini ultra wide screen was perfect for the job. And many hours were spent designing a kind of cyberpunk layout for it. So when you had all your monitoring up, it just looked simply amazing. But that all kind of changed plan when the game came out as he noticed a lot of ads from the game were in ultra wide format. So he spent time screen capturing them to make a rolling advert panel. He even went as far as adding normal widescreen size animated videos side by side in the sequence, which kind of actually turned out to be fairly long, a whopping seven minutes. As with the desk build that we covered before, we all know that the real talent is the woman behind the man, Richie's wife. I mean, I joke, but she's done an amazing job with the engraving of a male V character on the front glass panel. Richie stands by the fact that he and his wife make a pretty great team when it comes to collaborating on his builds. Richie also informed me that he spent a whole day airbrushing an image of Night City right on the motherboard tray. The sad part is you, well, you can't see it. Well done, dude. <laughs> Apparently it looks amazing. I haven't seen it, but yeah, way to go champ. The rest of the build features all bits power custom loop parts and the lighting is done in conjunction with Razer's recently released Chroma addressable RGB controller. And I'm sure you're gonna agree with me, it looks absolutely amazing. Now the mods don't exactly stop when you move outside of the case and out of the system. Each system has a Rocket Kane 200 AMO mouse, which he sanded down the original paint to get them back to clear. He then masked the Arasaka logo on one so that the lighting would shine through it and then put a metallic silver base with graphics done in pearl red and covered in candy yellow and three coats of lacquer. The other mouse was done in pretty much the same way, but he used a concoction of green, blue, and white pearl that he'd used previously on the case and masked out the Miltech logo in pretty much the same way. 
Both keypads are the Mountain Everest Max, with custom keycaps to match each side of the theme and to tie in with the mice. He even customised the small display on top of the keyboard to bring everything in together. I mean, just to give you a little bit of a note, we reviewed that keyboard and thought it was absolutely amazing, especially coming from a company who's never made keyboards before. The headsets are slightly different, with both coming from Sennheiser. The Miltech side is the GSP 670, with the sides being sprayed with metallic silver, the tri-paint mix used before, and Voodoo Boy logos on the outer part of the ear cups. The other headset for the Arasaka side is the same paint but with Red Pearl and Moxie's logos on each ear cup. Monitor-wise, Gigabyte sent out two G27FC 165Hz 1080p monitors. While Cyberpunk isn't the fastest paced game in the world, having these monitors, which include adaptive sync, means that any game you throw at it will simply look stunning. Now, I've said it time and time again, streaming and video recording is big business these days, and sometimes storing those video files can be daunting due to their file size. To combat this, this setup has a QNAP TS453 TB3 NAS with custom cyberpunk vinyl artwork all over it. Or as I joked around with Richie, he basically stuck some stickers on it. Good job, little buddy. Inside it, however, is four Seagate Ironwolf 16 terabyte NAS drives in RAID 0, so no problem with speeds or capacity. Now, after playing Cyberpunk myself since it released, I kept finding myself, well, playing for hours and not even realizing it. That takes a lot of toll on your body, so sitting in comfort is very, very important. Enter Secret Labs with their Omega and Titan gaming chairs, featuring PU leather and Cyberpunk artwork. I mean, I've got to be honest, as a Herman Miller Aeron sort of fanboy, these actually feel great and they look even better, and your backside will definitely thank you for it in the long run. Finally, having a system and a setup like this is one thing, but having that extra level of immersion is another. This is where Philips Hue comes in with basically a whole host of goodies to really bring out the best when it comes to gameplay. With two iris floor lamps behind each chair, two two meter hue light strips wrapped around the back and side of each desk, and three play bars on the back of each monitor, they are all controlled by two individual hue sync boxes to really kind of complement the build, the setup, and just generally what's happening on the screen. I've got to admit, as someone who's never really used Philips Hue, I've used some of their competitor products, but it looks absolutely amazing and really just finishes the setup off in style. And that is pretty much everything in a nutshell. It's big, it's bold, it's brash. But to be honest, I wouldn't expect anything else from Richie Bowser. It takes an idea and just kind of propels it into a completely different world of immersion, very much like the game already does. This just takes it one step further. And to be fair, it looks simply amazing. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. And let me know in the comments section below if you like these types of videos where we kind of look at mods and what people have done and that type of stuff, especially when it's around pretty much the hottest game, well, of the last 10 years. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.